Welcome to Season 3 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big topics into small bites. I'm your host, Dr. Amy Newsel, and I'm joined by my dear friend, women's health and fertility expert, naturopathic physician, Kate Namas, to break down infertility, hormones, and the whole baby-making shebang. This week, let's talk about folic acid versus 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate in women and men with and without the MTHFR polymorphism. And in the show notes, you can find some research resources to share with your care team and your ob gyne or midwife. So this is a hot topic. <laughs> Super hot. <laughs> yeah. Um in in common practice, in I will say routine allopathic practice, the standard of care is a prenatal vitamin with folic acid. In naturopathic offices, that is typically not what we are likely to do. We are more likely to give uh, a prenatal vitamin with 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So unfortunately, this is an area with very little research. And at the start, I would like to say that, you know, infertility centers, the 5,000 micrograms of folic acid as an intervention for repeat pregnancy loss is very successful. It's largely a good idea and getting any folate is better than not getting a folate, right? So if you have a choice between no prenatal and a prenatal vitamin with folic acid, I think it's important to take the prenatal vitamin. But if you have a choice between a prenatal vitamin with folic acid and a prenatal vitamin with the more active form, 5-LMTHF, then potentially it's more important to do the more active form because there is risk of genetic variances that affect the way you can activate that. So yes, the 5,000 micrograms folic acid as an intervention is very successful and it has helped thousands of couples get to the baby in arms phase, right? That's what we want. It's an amazing thing. And as a first step, it can be a really great intervention. Where I would like to talk about doing something different is when couples are still having fertility issues after trying with folic acid and failing. Right. So a couple has been trying to conceive. They didn't get pregnant. They were on folic acid. Let's switch over to folate. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, also possibly in couples where one or both parties are dealing with two bad copies of an MTHFR gene, two or more. This was the case for my husband and myself, um, and 5,000 micrograms of folic acid was never the right option for us. So the most important piece of research to take to your midwife or fertility practitioner is a study published in the Journal of Assisted Reproduction and Genetics in 2018. This study followed 33 couples in which one or both of the partners had an MTHFR polymorphism and who had fertility problems lasting at least four years. So this is, this is a huge chunk of time for fertility problems, right? Um, you'll notice that these folks are really, really well established in their fertility journey. They've been trying for a very long time. This could, so their, their journey included many things, including recurrent fetal loss, premature ovarian failure, or abnormal sperm parameters. So bear in mind, it could be the mother or the father who has MTHFR issues and the mother or the father or both who have fertility issues. Two thirds of these couples had previously failed assisted reproductive technology attempts. And so that's usually something like IVF. Now, most of the women in this study had been previously treated unsuccessfully with 5,000 micrograms or the five milligrams of folic acid. And this is really important because we don't necessarily want to skip over this step, right? It's a very simple intervention that does work for a lot of people, um, but these people have largely already failed this intervention. It's not working for them. So the couples in this study were given 600 micrograms, which is actually an incredibly low dose, of 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the active form, for four months before attempting another conception or starting another round of assisted fertility treatment. So some of these people were conceiving, trying to conceive naturally. Some of them were actually doing another round of IVF. And this is literally the only thing they changed. So four months of 600 micrograms active folate. This four-month period was chosen to allow for a complete cycle of spermatogenesis, which is approximately 74 days. So st sperm formation from start to beginning takes about four months. And because both the men and women in the study were being treated, they want them both to have the benefit of this full picture, right? 
And the results of this incredibly simple intervention were to me completely astounding. So of these 33 couples, two were still in treatment at the date of reporting. So two were still working on their fertility journey, but hadn't figured out if their interventions were working or not. 13 couples conceived spontaneously. So this is after four years of unsuccessful reproductive attempts. This 600 microgram dose of active folate helped 13 out of 33 couples make a baby, just like wow. through nature. That's amazing to me. Unmedicated. Yeah, unmedicated. Not, wow. not doing anything, just having sex, taking their folate. <laughs> amazing. Another Perfect orgasms too, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Promise the moon, Kate. Yes. Promise the moon. <laughs> um, also, of these 33 couples, 14 achieved successful pregnancies using assisted reproductive technology, right? And so that's either IVF, in vitro fertilization, or some other method of sort of reproductive assistance. Three couples did not achieve successful pregnancies. That's three out of 33. And one couple failed to report back. So to me, after four years of fertility intervention, that's pretty astounding, right? Because we have solidly 27 couples out of 33 who are having babies. What the what? That's amazing. That's giant. That's, that's a fun giant. study. And so I'm going to read the conclusion of this study verbatim because I can't say it any better. And it's just so wonderful. So the conventional use of large doses of folic acid, five milligrams per day, has become obsolete. Regular doses of folic acid, 100 to 200 micrograms, can be tolerated in the general population, but should be abandoned in the presence of MTHFR mutations, as the biochemical or genetic background of the patient precludes a correct supply of 5-MTHF, the active compound. A physiological dose of 5-MTHF, 800 micrograms, bypasses the MTHFR block and is suggested to be an effective treatment for those couples. Moreover, it avoids potential adverse effects of the UMFA syndrome or UMFA syndrome, which is suspected of causing immune dysfunction and other adverse pathological effects such as cancer, especially colorectal and prostate, end quote. And that is from this article. I will put the citation within the show notes. But um, I just want to clarify that UMFA or UMFA is unmetabolized folic acid, which does build up in the bloodstream. So the most startling result of this research, I feel, is the tremendous number of couples who were able to conceive spontaneously after a simple few month low dose intervention with methylfolate. To me, this makes a good argument because methylfolate there's no risk to taking it, right? Like this isn't something that's going to hurt a person who doesn't have MTHFR. And so why not, right? Like what, if you're getting a prenatal anyway, and you're paying for a prenatal anyway, it makes sense to pay the little bit extra for methylfolate to me. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of amounts, the research really isn't there yet, right? Like, so this study did a, actually a 600 microgram dose, which is a very low dose. And it's hard to say whether this is actually the optimal dose during pregnancy for, for um, MTHFR issues, because that research hasn't been done yet. We don't know, right? We don't have any comparison, like here's, here's 600 micrograms versus a thousand or 1500 or whatever. That research just doesn't exist. But for many ob and midwifery teams talking with them seriously about this study will help them to see your point of view and encourage them to walk down this path with you as an alternative, especially if you've already tried the five micrograms of folic acid. So very cool. Love I know that. I love that study. I love that study. And sometimes it really is, you know, it matters to have your care team all on the same page mm -hmm. and to feel well supported during pregnancy. Um, so we were talking during the break, like I, you know, I just trusted my care team. I just went with what they said. I didn't want to be my own doctor. And I think a lot of women feel that way during pregnancy. It's also overwhelming anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's nice if your care team is on board with, with the health measures that are important to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening today and sharing your time with us. If you like this show, please follow and maybe even leave a review. Or like and subscribe if you happen to be watching on YouTube. 
visit namesnd.com or to healthwiththat.com for more information about Drs. Kate and me, Dr. Amy. Thank you.